All right, good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is really exciting for me because I'm talking about one of my favorite, favorite things in the world and that is sunscreen. Um, so I started using sunscreen religiously about three years ago. Prior to that, I didn't realize I should be putting sunscreen on my face every single day. Wearing sunscreen on a daily basis has made such a huge difference in my skin. I really have Dr. Dre to thank for that. I'm sure you guys know who she is, but if you don't, I will link to her channel down below. She is a board certified dermatologist and I have learned so much from her. Three years ago, I also started dabbling into retinoids and started using Adapalene for about two and a half years. And I also learned about some of the other important skincare products that I should be incorporating to help reduce hyperpigmentation and other visible signs of photo aging caused mostly by UV rays, things like vitamin C, niacinamide. So I have devised myself a really great skincare routine over the last two and a half to three years that has made just huge differences in the quality of my skin, the appearance of my skin, in my confidence, just how I feel overall, and it also just feels really good to be using really good quality skincare products. Skincare and doing my skincare in the morning and at night has become two of my most cherished, beloved parts of my day. It's my favorite time of day to give my skin some TLC and put these wonderful products on, and also just to see the positive changes in my skin month after month, year after year, and I'm just so, so grateful for everything I've learned from Dr. Dre and other wonderful channels. Some of you might be aware that I recently switched from Adapalene to Tretinoin. I have officially been on Tretinoin now for 36 days. The first couple of weeks, I would say the first 14, 15 days, I went through some really, really rough patches. I will talk more about that in another video. I don't wanna make this video all about Tretinoin, um, but through those first couple of weeks and through the last few weeks, I've really been looking for great sunscreens that are aesthetically pleasing, and I really just started getting into um, more into the sunscreen world because as many of you probably know if you've landed on this channel, it's really difficult to find an aesthetically pleasing mineral sunscreen. There are some great ones out there, but I had to do a lot of hunting, a lot of researching, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you my favorite ones that I have discovered. I'm going to tell you which ones have the best or the worst cast, which ones are the most aesthetically pleasing, the tinted ones that have worked for me or not worked for me, and the majority of the sunscreens I'm going to be talking about in today's video are mineral because I personally prefer a mineral sunscreen. I also have a few hybrid and chemical to talk about, and I do have a couple of fails to share with you. So make sure that you watch right until the very end to see what my top, top favorites are, as well as what the fails were. I just want to mention a couple of tidbits to preface this video. So first of all, what you are going to like in a sunscreen is going to be very individual depending on your type of skin, where you live, what type of climate you have. Where I live, I live in a very dry climate. We do not have oceans or large bodies of water nearby and I do tend to have dry, slightly sensitive skin. So the type of sunscreens I prefer are ones that help out with sort of dry, sensitive skin. Another thing that I want to mention is that I prefer mineral sunscreens over chemical just because if something is going to burn around my eyes, that is going to be a huge deal breaker for me because I put the appropriate amount of sunscreen on my face. Any sunscreen that you apply in just a couple dabs is going to rub in and look beautiful. So. A lot of people try sunscreens and they put the tiniest amount and they say, oh, this one is so aesthetically pleasing. But actually, if you were to apply the appropriate amount that you're supposed to apply, you might find that maybe it's not that aesthetically pleasing. So for me, it's important to find a sunscreen that is going to be aesthetically pleasing that I can wear on its own and that is also going to be um, buildable and aesthetically pleasing to reapply throughout the day without looking like a ghost or without it getting into my eyes and burning. I also wanted to mention that personally, I do not mind a slight subtle cast. I'm not talking about like a diaper rash cream cast. I'm talking about a very subtle kind of a glowy dewy finish from a cast. Personally, because I'm quite fair skinned, I find that it acts as a brightening primer for me. It really evens out my skin tone. It makes my skin look healthy and dewy and glowing. And I get lots of compliments on my skin. People telling me that my skin looks like it's glowing. And honestly, most of the time, you guys, I'm just wearing sunscreen. I don't have concealer or foundation and I get compliments. All the sunscreen in today's video is pretty easy to get. You can get it either on Amazon, Walmart, drugstore, Yes Style, Style Vana. So I'm going to link to all the places where I got these sunscreen screens from. Not a single product in today's video was gifted to me. Not a single product is sponsored. I spend all of my own money on all of these sunscreens. Um, so I am in no way under any obligation to give a positive review to anything. I just really want to tell you guys what worked for me, what I like the best, because I get lots of questions over on my Instagram since I started sharing my tretinoin journey. And I also wanted to mention that I think it's really 
crazy that still so many people don't realize that they should be wearing sunscreen on an every single day basis. Yeah, even sometimes when I go into the store to look at sunscreens, the people that are working there will say something like, oh yeah, well, you definitely would burn really easily if you're out in the sun. And I just say, actually, I don't ever put myself in a position where I could burn. I don't sit out in the sun. I don't let the sun sit on my face for a long period of time. And I wear sunscreen every single day even if I'm going to be indoors the whole day, even if it's an overcast day in the middle of winter in Canada, I still wear sunscreen. And I honestly think that that has helped my skin so much. I am in my late thirties and I'm often told that people think that I'm in my early to mid twenties. So obviously something is working. I'm doing something right. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's get into today's video. And if you guys have a Holy grail sunscreen or a mineral sunscreen or a Korean sunscreen that you think I should try, or that you think other people would be interested in, definitely list it down below so that it can help everybody find even better um, products. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started with these sunscreens. All right, so in my number 10 spot, I have a hybrid sunscreen, which means that it is a mixture of chemical and mineral filters. And like I said, I don't prefer chemical sunscreens, you guys. So this is not a favorite for me. I don't think it's going to be a go-to, but it is a beautiful, very aesthetically pleasing sunscreen that I wanted to share with you guys because I think a lot of people would be absolutely head over heels with this sunscreen. And I wanted to try this one because it's been actually pretty relatively hyped up. It retails for somewhere between 50 and 70 Canadian dollars, which is pretty expensive. It's definitely one of the more pricey ones on this list for that reason. And because I do prefer just a pure mineral sunscreen, I probably will not make this a go-to. So this one has absolutely no cast. This is a very beautiful, aesthetically pleasing sunscreen. It goes on like a spa-like moisturizer. It literally feels like I am applying a super high-end, beautiful moisturizer to my skin, and it dries completely clear with no cast. It has a very natural, hydrating, but skin-like and satin finish. It's not super dewy. It's not glowy. Um, it doesn't leave any kind of a cast. It's extremely aesthetically pleasing. It does have a slight burn for me around the eyes, probably because of those chemical filters that are in there, and I'm very sensitive to chemical sunscreens. Um, it's really hard for me to find a sunscreen with with chemical filters that doesn't burn around the eyes. I will say that this was definitely less irritating for me than some other chemical sunscreens I've tried. So this one definitely got a higher rating for me just because overall it's feels very high end. It feels like a luxury spa product. Um, it's very hydrating and it's extremely cosmetically elegant. So if you're somebody who wants something that's going to dry down completely, um, is going to look great under makeup, you can wear it by itself. If you already have great skin and don't want to wear any foundation, this one would probably be a great one for you. One other thing to note about the sunscreen is it does also contain niacinamide, but some people do find niacinamide to be a little irritating. So if your skin is sensitive, this one might be one to just be careful of, the niacinamide could be helpful for you or it could be irritating for you. Personally, um, when I was in the beginning of my tretinoin journey, I could not put anything on my face that contained niacinamide. It just burned terribly. So just something to note with the Alta MD Clear is that it is not just a straight up sunscreen. There's also other ingredients. In my number nine spot, I have a pretty hyped up Korean uh, sunscreen and Korean sunscreens are something I've been getting into a lot lately. This one is Beauty of Joseon. You guys have probably heard of it. It has this beautiful, like really pretty packaging. I was so, so excited to get this sunscreen and try it out. This is actually a hybrid. So again, it has a combination of chemical and mineral filters in it. And it is an SPF 50 with a PA rating of four pluses. If you guys aren't aware of what a PA rating is, it's essentially a rating of how well it blocks the UV rays, which are the ones that are responsible for aging. You can remember it in terms of UVB stands for burning and UVA stands for aging. So when you're looking at preventing those visible signs of aging, you want to get a sunscreen that has really good filters that will block the most amount of UVA. But I think four plus is like considered one of the absolute best for UVA blocking um, abilities in a sunscreen. So I think the reason that this sunscreen went kind of viral is because again, very cosmetically elegant, very aesthetically pleasing and dries down to almost nothing. It looks like you are not wearing a sunscreen at all. It's very hydrating and feels very moisturizing on the skin. And again, it is a kind of a spa-like, um, really enjoyable experience to apply this sunscreen. It does not feel like you were applying sunscreen at all. Um, what I will say is that again, when I'm testing sunscreens, I put them around my eyes because you have to apply sunscreen around your eyes. Skin cancers are common around the eyes. Not only that, but of course your visible signs of aging. So you don't want to be avoiding that area. 
So when I applied this one around the eye area, I did notice that I got a slight burning sensation, but nothing like what I get with the American sunscreen. Um, so this one did not cause burning around the eyes to the point that I felt like it was unbearable, but it still for me is a little bit of a deal breaker because I have so many great mineral options. Why would I put something on my face around my eyes that even slightly burns? Like why would I put myself through that? It doesn't have any cast at all. It dries down, like I said, completely clear. You really cannot tell that you're wearing sunscreen very aesthetically pleasing but for me personally that slight burn around my eyes is still going to be a deal breaker when i have so many great mineral sunscreens to choose from that don't burn my eyes in the eighth spot is another chemical sunscreen but this one is another korean sunscreen and something that i've noticed is that the filters in the korean sunscreens that are chemical do not tend to burn as much as the ones that you can buy that are made here in the united states or canada i live in canada but that are here that are american sunscreens so in my eighth spot is the etude sunprise mild watery light spf 50 with a pa rating of four pluses so this one i actually took and purposely put it all around my eyes in a very decent amount because I really wanted to see how much is this going to be burning because honestly the finish is beautiful and I know that it's a very elegant cosmetically pleasing um, sunscreen but for me I really wanted to see was it going to burn around the eyes and honestly you guys I was pretty pleasantly surprised with this one one thing about this one is that it dries down to a barely there skin like almost satin type of finish and it's not greasy or dewy so it doesn't move around and shift around and run into my eyes one thing about a lot of sunscreens is that they have a little bit of a greasiness to them sometimes or a bit of a moisturizing effect or they're very dewy and so they do tend to shift around and move around and get into the eyes a little bit easier this one didn't seem to do that it really seemed to stay put and stay in place um, and didn't shift into my eyes that badly I noticed that there was a very very slight burning sensation just ever so subtle like I could tell that there was a chemical sunscreen but it wasn't to the point that I had to go and wash it off so I was really really impressed I have to say that some of these Korean chemical sunscreens are just so much more gentle around the eyes than a lot of the American ones and so this one is really hardly noticeable dries down to a beautiful satin barely there finish it's extremely aesthetically elegant personally I probably won't opt for this one unless I am planning on doing a full face of glam makeup or something and I want my skin to be kind of like a bit like I don't have any sunscreen on that would be probably the only time I would ever use this but personally I don't put on a full face of like glam makeup almost ever. <laughs> I pretty much just roll like super minimal makeup. So um, if you're somebody who wants to load products onto your face and you want to have you know to be starting with like a skin like satin foundation this would be a great one to go with and yeah like i say it did not burn around the eyes near as bad as some of the american ones so this one i was pretty pleasantly surprised with so that one is in my number eight spot Okay, in my number seven spot, now we are getting into the purely mineral sunscreen. So everything from here on through the rest of the video is going to be purely mineral. And then like I said at the end, I will share my fails, which are some chemical and some mineral and tinted, etc. So this is the Etude Sunprise Mineral Sunscreen. This is called the Mild Airy Finish. It has an SPF 50 with a PA4 plus rating. So again, one of the highest ratings for blocking those UVA rays. This one is absolutely beautiful. Um, it has absolutely no cast it's non-irritating it's almost like a serum like kind of a thin watery application you do have to give it a bit of a shake and it finishes like a satin skin like finish with no glow no cast um, great for having to reapply throughout the day I actually reapplied this two or three times throughout the day that I tested it and you could not tell I had anything on my skin it's just extremely um, cosmetically elegant great for people who want no trace of sunscreen on their skin great for people with maybe oilier skin who don't want to have a dewy glowy finish if you already get very oily for me I don't have oily skin I have more dry skin so this one is almost even a little too mattifying or drying for my taste um, the only thing I would say about it is that like I told you guys I kind of almost prefer a little bit of a dewiness a little bit of a subtle cast because like I say it kind of evens up my skin tone and it kind of provides like a brightening effect this doesn't have any brightening or dewy effect so if that's something that you're looking for you're not going to find it here but this was just such 
a ple- such a pleasant uh, sunscreen to apply. It just went on so nicely and it just absorbed completely and was really, really pleasant to use. If I was doing a full face of makeup, I think this would have been fantastic, but just for wearing it by itself for me personally, I, I would have preferred it to have just a little bit more of a dewy finish, um, but that's just me personally. So this one wears well under makeup. You pretty much can't tell that you're wearing anything. This is probably one of the nicest um, mineral sunscreens if you truly want to wear a sunscreen that doesn't look like you're wearing sunscreen. Definitely do check out the Etude Sun Prize. This one I got from Style Vana as well as the other Sun Prize sunscreen. They came as a bundle. Um, so I will link down below where I got this bundle, you guys. Pretty affordable. What I notice is a lot of people tend to be on the hunt for the perfect sunscreen and they end up paying like $75 for a sunscreen. You really don't have to. There's so many great ones for like less than $25 or $30. So that is in my number seven spot. Spot. That is the Etude Sun Prize Mild Airy Finish. The next one is another Korean sunscreen, and this is the Revectin Skin Essentials Aqua Soothing UV Protector SPF 50 with a PA4 Plus rating, and this is a non-chemical filter. So this is another mineral mineral sunscreen. This one is about 20 Canadian dollars, and um, this is actually a really really nice one. I really like the finish, and I really like how it wears throughout the day. It does have a little bit of a patchy application. That's the only thing I can say about this one is when you first put it on especially over top of moisturizer it kind of goes on a little bit patchy it looks like you're skipping parts of your skin and it's clinging to other parts of your skin but you just have to work it in a little bit more and as you start to work it in and continue to rub it in it eventually does go on as an ease as an all over even application it just does take a little bit more working in um, but like I say once it's all worked in once it's all spread all over your skin I really like the finish and the way that it looks it has a very very subtle cast maybe like a 2 out of 10 if 10 is the worst cast ever and 0 is nothing at all it's maybe about a 2 maybe a 3 you can tell that you have a sunscreen on but it's nothing crazy and it wears really nicely under makeup um, and it is kind of like a satin yeah I would say like a satin skin like to maybe mildly dewy finish so it's a very very nice sunscreen um definitely my type of sunscreen where I'm getting a slight brightening effect but it's not at the same time overly dewy or overly casty so this one was quite nice like I said the only thing I didn't love about it was the patchy application otherwise I think it's a great one the next one is one that I actually found at my local drugstore, and this is the Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen Sheer Lotion for Face. This is an SPF 50, and this is an all-mineral sunscreen. And this one actually had pretty good reviews online. So what I will say about this one is that I really like it if I wear it with a little bit of makeup over top with concealer or foundation. On its own, what I find is that it doesn't completely seem to dry down. All of my other mineral sunscreens, even if they're kind of dewy, they eventually do sort of dry down or dry up to a more satiny kind of finish whereas this one seemed to stay a little bit more greasy throughout the day it didn't seem to ever completely dry down however once I put a little bit of concealer on top that kind of dulled down a little bit of the dewiness and then it just looked beautiful it just made my skin look beautiful vibrant and glowing so on a day that I'm going to apply a little bit of makeup this will be a great one on its own it feels to me like it stays a little too greasy for me and I didn't appreciate that about it um, so this one has a little bit of a cast in terms of very light reflecting, very dewy. This is probably the dewiest one of the entire video, you guys. So if you want like ultimate glow and reflection, this is definitely one to go with. If you absolutely do not like any kind of a dewiness or a greasiness or anything like that, stay away from this one. But I thought it was really beautiful. Putting it on the skin felt very, very nice and moisturizing and soothing. Um, I think that it has some really hydrating, nourishing ingredients in here as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I really liked it. The only thing I would say again is that it just didn't ever seem to completely dry down. It felt like like hours and hours later, it still hadn't completely dried down. So then if you're going to reapply on top of that, you're going to be pretty greasy and dewy throughout the whole day. But otherwise it was lovely, you guys. Like I have to say for somebody with dry skin, super, super nice. And this one retails for less than 20 Canadian dollars. So the price is right with this one. You're getting about 50 milliliters of lotion, which is pretty average for about $20. And this contains zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And so yeah, this one is still in my top five, even though it was a little on the greasier, dewier side. 
The next one is the HelioCare 360 Mineral Tolerance Fluid Sunscreen SPF 50 with a PA4 plus rating. This is a UVA UVB um, sunscreen and this is from Cantabria Labs. So this one I actually ordered from Amazon and apparently once it got here I learned that it shipped all the way from Portugal. So this actually took three weeks to get to me you guys. That's my only complaint and I think it's also kind of hard to get. I think on Amazon it's actually sold out or it gives you a list of different vendors. So this one's a little bit hard to get your hands on um, if you can find it though this is fantastic so this is actually a tinted mineral sunscreen I usually don't go with tinted mineral sunscreens because like I said I'm pretty fair most mineral most tinted mineral sunscreens end up being way too dark on me even the lightest ones are still too orange or too dark um, or it looks like I've put self tanner on my face which I don't like that look this one however as you can see the tint is a beautiful very very light fair tint that actually massages pretty much completely in and it almost looks like you're not wearing anything at all this one you do have to give a little bit of a shake to as well it dries with no cast um, and kind of like a satin finish so it's extremely aesthetically pleasing um, really good for lighter skin tones if you are fair or light like myself and you want a tinted sunscreen um, this is a good one to check out also it's worth noting that sunscreens that are tinted have iron oxides in them which also help prevent against blue light which also can contribute to hyperpigmentation blue light is what comes from like your computer screen and your cell phone it's a really good idea if you can find one with an iron oxide that's like even better protection for your skin so this is a really great tinted one like I say the only thing I would say is that a little bit harder to get your hands on and other than that I don't think there was anything I really needed to say about this one you do get 50 mils it feels like the container is small and skinny but you do get your basic amount which is 50 mils and this one does retail for approximately 25 canadian dollars which beats the heck out of lots of other um, american sunscreens that are a little bit more highly priced and don't look as nice so yeah definitely a good one if you can get your hands on it i highly highly recommend the helia care Okay, you guys, in my number three spot, I have a sunscreen that I have been using for a couple years on and off, and it's become one of my sort of holy grails, and this is the Coppertone Pure and Simple for Face, 100% Zinc Oxide Mineral Sunscreen, Hypoallergenic and Gentle SPF 50. So this one probably has, I would say, the worst cast out of everything in this video in terms of not, not the dewiness or the greasiness, but more so in terms of the amount of white that it leaves on your skin. Um, however, for me, it's not that bad because I'm pretty fair so I can handle having a little bit more of that cast I would say on a scale of 0 to 10 if 10 is the worst cast ever like straight up diaper rash cream and 0 is no cast at all I would give this one about a 4 to a 5 so it is a little bit more casty but even so it does dry down after a while to be like almost nothing is on your on your skin but for me personally I can still kind of tell that there's a bit of a cast there but it's nothing too crazy and it does look really nice under makeup so what i love about this one you guys is that it's formulated for the face it's very gentle it's hydrating it's soothing it's extremely good for dry sensitive irritated skin um, when i was in the throes of my beginning phases of tretinoin this one and the one i'm going to share next were just lovely they absolutely did not cause any irritation i found them to be very soothing and very hydrating it's worth noting that zinc oxide is also a very um a very soothing ingredient it's what they put in diaper rash cream it's what people use for excoriated skin so it has a lot of healing and soothing properties so great for if you have dry irritated skin um, so it does dry down almost cast free on me but for the first couple of hours it is a little bit more casty but like I say it's not something that I mind at all if you have a darker skin tone this might not be good for you but it's not pasty like one of the fails I'm gonna share at the end of this video it's not like a pasty diaper rash cream kind of a cast it's just like a little bit whiter it, it definitely has more of a brightening and whitening kind of effect on the skin like I said I do actually prefer if my sunscreen provides a little bit of a brightening effect so that doesn't bother me at all so in my number three spot I have my copper tone pure and simple face I will throw this on if I'm just hanging out at home for the whole day and I just want some good skin and skincare and good sun protection and I don't really care like 
if I'm going out, if I'm seeing people. That being said, I will also wear this if I go to work. So, and I get compliments on my skin when I wear this. So it can't be that bad. <laughs> so that is in my number three spot. This one is also super affordable, you guys. It's $10 and you get 59 mils and you can find it literally at Walmart, any drugstore. So super easy to find. Love this sunscreen. Okay, in my number two spot, you guys, I have sort of my holy grail sunscreen that I've been sharing with you guys for a really long time. This is the Coppertone Pure and Simple for Baby SPF 50. This is 100% zinc oxide mineral sunscreen, and it retails for about $15 Canadian for 177 milliliters. So this is by far the most economical sunscreen in today's video the cheapest one that you get for your dollar value so this one again has a lot of similarities to the copper tone pure and simple for face except this one has a slightly less um casty finish believe it or not so this one is a little bit less casty than the pure and simple face still does have a little bit of a cast but nothing too crazy i would give it like maybe a three or four out of ten if ten is the worst ever and zero is no cast at all again it's extremely soothing and hydrating it's formulated for babies it's very very, very gentle it has no fragrance um, and this one also does dry down and leave almost no cast it dries down pretty much cast free it does take a couple of hours but it eventually does become more of like a satin finish and less and less casty as the day goes on and this one for me is just so wonderful because it's soothing it leaves a bit of a dewy complexion it makes my skin look hydrated and plump um again i get compliments on my skin when i wear this sunscreen people tell me that my skin looks so healthy and like plump and fresh it's just a really great sunscreen it has a little bit of that sort of skin evening out um like complexion brightening complexion evening characteristic to it because it is a mineral sunscreen spf 50 i mean there's really not much else you could ask for in a sunscreen if you don't like a dewy finish if you don't like a hydrating dewy finish you are not going to like this one and you're not going to like the other copper tone um they're not as dewy and like greasy as the blue lizard they're definitely better than the blue lizard in terms of that um but they still do have quite a dewy finish so yeah, that is the Copper Tone Baby. You guys, this is one of my favorite sunscreens ever, ever of all time. I've gone through a couple bottles of this already and I'm almost done this bottle and I still have a backup because that's how much I love it. They did just recently change the packaging. So if you go looking for this one, you're gonna find the packaging looks a little different. Just make sure that it is the Copper Tone Pure and Simple Baby SPF 50. I saw it at Walmart the other day and they had the updated packaging. So just make sure I'll try to find a picture of it and put it on the screen for you. Other than that, you guys, not much else to say about this one. I absolutely love it and I have saved my top new favorite I think what will eventually be probably a holy grail for me for my number one spot okay and in my number one spot you guys my top new favorite mineral sunscreen that I think might eventually replace my copper tone I don't know though because it's a little bit more expensive it's harder to get um, it's not as readily available but it is the pipette mineral sunscreen broad spectrum spf 50 fragrance free this one i think is formulated for babies as well however this is a wonderful face sunscreen so this is an spf 50 like i said it retails for roughly 30 canadian dollars for 120 mils you guys you can't beat that 30 dollars for 120 mils still beats the heck out of 60 or 70 for like 50 mils which you're looking at for some higher end quote unquote higher end sunscreen sunscreens. This one is a mineral sunscreen that has, I would say probably about a two to three out of 10 cast. Um, not as casty as the copper tone, but not totally cast free. But for me, that's perfect because like I say, I kind of like when the zinc oxides sort of even out my skin tone and give me a brightening effect. It's absolutely lovely. It's very aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. If you have a darker skin tone, you might not like it as much, but for somebody who I would say is like fair to light, even medium skin tones, you might really, really love this sunscreen. What I love about it, it is hydrating. It's very like nourishing and soothing it feels to put on the skin it's a really lovely application it dries down to a mildly dewy finish so there's a little bit of a mild dewiness but it's not greasy and it's not super super dewy like the blue lizard or like the copper tone um, overall it really is very cosmetically elegant it wears well under makeup and you can apply this numerous times throughout the day without looking like you've got a whole bunch of chalky sunscreen on your face 
absolutely gorgeous. Looks really nice. Um, makes my skin look young and plump and fresh and dewy, which is exactly what I want. I can wear this without makeup. I can wear this just alone every single day as like a go-to sunscreen. I also like that you get so much for the amount that you pay. This one I got from Amazon and I think it is still available, you guys. This one is definitely worth getting backups. Um, it is a fantastic sunscreen and I'm so happy that I found it. I also think that the packaging is quite cute. So yeah, in my number one spot, you guys, we have the pipettes. Again, I will link this all down below. And now let's get into my three fails that I wanna share with you. All right, so my first fail is another mineral sunscreen. This is from Neutrogena. This is the Neutrogena Sheer Zinc Face Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. It says it's water resistant up to 80 minutes, hypoallergenic, and is 100% zinc oxide. So calling it Sheer Zinc, I don't know why they would put that on there because it's not sheer at all. Um, this was the absolute worst cast out of all the ones I'm mentioning in today's video. This is a terrible, terrible cast. I would give it like probably a seven or eight out of 10. Um, I could see it on my face the entire day. It did not dry down. Um, it just looked absolutely ridiculous. I felt embarrassed wearing it. I actually had to put foundation over top just to cover up the white cast. So with foundation, it looked okay but my skin tone still looked very unnatural and I just did not appreciate it. That being said, I did try mixing it with one of the sunscreens coming up and when I mixed it with that sunscreen, the two together looked really nice because the sunscreen coming up that I'm gonna share with you is a tinted one that was too dark. So if you were to mix this with a really dark tinted sunscreen, that might be okay. Um, or if you wanna wear a foundation over top, but honestly, you guys, this one I think I'm just gonna return. I was not impressed with um, the amount of cast that it left, especially since they advertise it as being sheer. It's absolutely not sheer. And I couldn't even test it in the store um, because obviously they didn't have a tester or anything. So this was definitely a huge disappointment. I don't fall for that marketing of the sheer zinc face because it's definitely not sheer. <laughs> The next one that I had really high hopes for that unfortunately did turn out to be a bit of a fail is the Australian Gold Botanical 50 sunscreen. This is the tinted face and this is for fair to light. So this particular sunscreen actually comes in a few different shades of tint and I obviously ordered the lightest one and it still was too dark for me. Um, yeah, believe it or not, it still was too orange, too dark, looked like I'd applied bronzer over my entire face and that is not the look I'm going for. I actually prefer to have a light, bright complexion and then like put bronzer where I want bronzer. But yeah, when I put this over my whole face, it just looked like I was wearing too dark of a foundation essentially. Um, otherwise it's absolutely beautiful. If this tint works for you, if you can find a tint that works for your skin tone, um, this is lovely and I definitely would recommend it. It just turned out to be a fail for me. The finish on this one, you guys is beautiful. It's like a powdery velvety, lovely finish. It's so, so nice. And this was the one that I said that I mixed with the Neutrogena Sheer Zinc. When I mix the two together, um, the color is actually perfect for me. It almost looks like I'm wearing a little bit of foundation. It doesn't even look like I'm wearing sunscreen. Um, however, it's kind of like finicky to mix and match, make sure you get the right tone. I guess I could keep this one and keep the Neutrogena and mix them and wear them, but how likely am I to do that? I don't really know. The Neutrogena one is really, really thick. Um, overall, it just wasn't my favorite, so I, I probably will pass along the Australian Gold, to be honest. Did order it from Amazon. I think I had to order it from, was it Canadian? I think it was Canadian Amazon. And this one wasn't too terribly expect expensive. I think this one was about 25 Canadian dollars for 88 milliliters. So really not a bad price at all. Um, lovely sunscreen, definitely recommend it in terms of the finish. It's very cosmetically elegant if the tint works for you. But for me, unfortunately, it was too dark. Another one that I just want to quickly mention before I share my last one with you, this is one that was also a fail. I shared it in a video not too long ago, um, and this is the Dermatology SPF 46 or 44, I think, tinted sunscreen. So that sunscreen I no longer have. Luckily, I was able to find it in new home. This one was raved about by so many people, but again, the tint was just way too dark. I actually have some old footage I will put in here so you guys can see. Um, I no longer have that sunscreen, but yeah, the tint was just way, way too dark. So that's 
that's what I mean about tinted sunscreens is I just have such a hard time finding a tint that is light enough that it actually works for me, which is why I'm so thankful for that Helia Care 360. That was the tinted one I shared earlier in this video. That tint was perfect for me. So just to show you the difference between like the Helia Care versus the Australian Gold versus the Dermatology, definitely a huge difference in terms of tint. So that one would have been a great choice, except it was just way too dark. All right, and the biggest fail of today's video is not a fail because of the tint or because of the cast or anything like that. It is a fail because of how badly it burned my eyes. This is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios XL SPF 60 Anti-Brilliance Face for Sensitive Skin It Cells, it says. And the La Roche-Posay Anthelios uh, sunscreens are some of the most highly touted, talked about sunscreens. Unfortunately, we do not have the mineral milk melt in milk one that people talk about unfortunately i could not find that near me honestly at the price that it is compared to some of these other ones i've talked about in today's video i don't even know if it's worth going down that rabbit hole but a lot of uh, dermatologists really love the larish pose sunscreens this one was very aesthetically elegant it looked beautiful on it was really really nice to apply i love the formulation however you guys this burned my eyes so badly um, because what you put on your face doesn't stay in one spot. It does shift around, move around, and migrate. This eventually shifted, migrated into my eyes, and wow, I had to go upstairs and wash my face. I could not leave this on throughout the whole day. It was so, so painful. And again, I think it really comes down to some of these American filters that we're using because the Korean sunscreens with the chemical filters did not burn nearly this bad. So if you put this on your skin and you at all have a damaged skin barrier at all or a little bit of irritation, I think this is not going to be great. Even though it says it's for sensitive skin, honestly, you guys, personally, I just think go with a mineral sunscreen. Like find yourself a great mineral sunscreen, then you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So this one is the last one in today's video, you guys, and definitely my biggest disappointment simply because it was expensive and I had high hopes for it. I also wanted to do a quick compare and contrast by swatching a few of these for you so you can really see the difference between color and tint. So the one on the very left is the really casty Neutrogena that was a fail. The one beside it is the Heliocare, which is the tinted one that I really like. The one on the far right is the Australian Gold, and that is in their lightest tint, you guys. So definitely not good for like super fair, pale skin. Then I'm also going to put my winner from today's video, which is the Pipette Mineral Sunscreen, on the very far right so that you can really see the difference in like the formula, the glossiness, the glow, the cast, the tint, how it affects my skin and how it looks on my skin. And I don't know about you guys, but personally, I really, really like that pipette. I just love the way that it finishes. I love the kind of glowy effect that it has on my skin. I like that it has a very subtle cast, but it's nothing too crazy. Definitely very different from that Neutrogena. And so hopefully these swatches are helpful for you guys to kind of differentiate between formulas and what you might think works best for you. And just to show you the difference between like the type of cast I prefer versus a super casty like zinky one like the Neutrogena. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these sunscreens. Let me know, like I said down below, if you have a sunscreen that you think I should try or um, which of these you think you are the most likely to run out and get. Like I said, I will have everything linked down below. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these. I will do more videos in the future. I have a lot more Korean sunscreens coming in the mail and a lot more sunscreens in general that I will be trying. And I will keep updating you guys with the ones that I find that are the best um, and that I would recommend. So thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you guys all very soon in my next one. Don't forget to head on over and follow me on Instagram if you want to keep up with my tretinoin journey. And I will be sharing a video on this channel eventually about my tret journey, um, how long it took to acclimate, all of that kind of stuff, and the products that I've been using that have been working really well for my skin. And that's it. Thanks. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.